Meeting of February 9th. Um, well, do, do you want to do? You know who's here, right? Okay, so we're all set. Ten minutes twice. Okay, um, let's open up audience of citizens. We have Rick Kapaski on Zoom. Thanks for joining us, Rick. Um, representing Nutmeg Games. And so, Rick, we're going to open it up. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Um, like I said, my name is Rick Plasky. I'm the executive director for the Connecticut Sport Management Group. Uh, we run the, the Nutmeg Games. Um, I'm sure some of you probably know Patrick Fisher. I filled in um, and replaced him in the executive director's role. Um, so I know we've gone this in the past. I know, I believe this is the 12th year that we are requesting um, to use facilities in Berlin, um, specifically Scalise, the turf field, and the Beretta baseball field um, to have the field usage fees waived for that. Um, we like to said we would be using the baseball field, obviously for our baseball games, and then on the turf field, we would be using it for our boys and girls lacrosse, and then our girls field hockey. And these events would be taking place in June um specifically i could grab that um July. specifically we had june um field hockey would be from the june 14th to 15th our baseball would be july 17th through 23rd boys lacrosse um, and the girls field hockey would overlap. That would be the week of July 24th through the 30th. Um, and again, it is, uh, Middletown is our host city. We have requested to use facilities within Middletown as well. Uh, we just need to reach out everywhere possible just as a backup plan. You know, last year they ran into construction that was supposed to be going on at their fields. So we came back and used, um, Scalise uh, to fill some of those needs. So we're asking if we would be able to use that again this year. Um, and then as part of it, some of the benefits that we offer for um, Berlin out of that on our athlete t-shirt, these are given out to every athlete to participate in our games, um, would have the Berlin logo on there. Um, Chris Edge, we have worked with. He sends us, I know last year you guys had a, a, a campaign that he had created with the website about visiting Berlin um, for to promote their local businesses, restaurants, things like that. Um, we had that ad with links to that website posted in every one of our email campaigns that went out to all coaches and athletes that would be participating at any of our events taking place within the city. So they would be able to go out there and check out options within the city, um, stuff to do after their games, places to eat. We also um, have used hotels within the city in the past. Um, in our program that we create for the Nutmeg Games, that will be given out to athletes. We also have an ad for the city of Berlin that we put in there. And there is a concession stand, as you guys are aware of, at the facility. And we would also um, be open to allowing one of the booster clubs from a Berlin high school sport to come in while we have on the dates we're running these events. They could run concessions and use that as an extra type of fundraiser for them. Um, anything um, sold, all, all profits, all revenue would go to them. Um, just allowing them to come in while we're going to bring the bodies in, you know, an opportunity for them to raise some money as well. Great, thanks. So, um, with that, any questions or comments of Rick or the commissioners? Oh, uh, go yeah, ahead. So, uh, Rick, you mentioned in June? He meant July. 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 Okay, July. Cool. Yeah. July. July. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, if I apologize if I said June, I meant July. Um, Jen, I had noted July 14th here for the turf field, and then different one of the requests is July 14th as well. Different times. Okay, so we can accommodate them for their. Yep, time I already spot. told Rick he can't get on the field before one o'clock and see and if he's he can okay get off the field by 12:15. Yep, for okay. able to it. Okay. So, are all these field requests are they just backups or? Are you absolutely going to be using them that those days? 
At this time, I'm still trying to get confirmation from other places we've used. Right now, I'm anticipating we'll be, we will be there um, for probably the majority of those dates. Baseball, um, we will, I based on last year, we were not there every day, but just in, in case um, I wanted to request that for the whole week in case we run into a weather issue um, or scheduling conflicts at other fields where we could have that for availability. There are times when we need um, we need to use the Beretta because there's uh, there's a couple days where we'll need five um, regulation size fields and Middletown only has four. So that's when we hop over to um, Beretta. You know, one of our concerns as a commission um, is use of the fields when people reserve them. And if they're not being used and, it, and we've reserved it for a group and another group wants to use it, uh, you know, a couple of things go on, right? We use our resources to help get the field prep. And, and then we also may miss revenue because maybe an outside group wants to use it and they're going to pay. In this case, you're asking for, uh, you know, full, full relief of paying for the fields. So it, it is something that we're going to be talking about a little bit tonight. But um, the, the important thing is that our staff be kept involved. And if it's not going to be used, there has to be contact made. There always has been with Nutmeg Games. They've yeah, always given us ample notice if they're not using the So there's never been an issue. There's never been an issue where we thought was being used. Correct. Okay. Good. No, yeah. For now, I for now the original request I put in what we would know is the max days. Once we get in closer to the events and we get through our registration, I know how many teams, how many games we need. I'm always in contact with Jen and right. Steve Boyd of this is what our schedule is for the games coming up in two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. We we need it this date. We no longer need it on this date. You guys could remove us and fill it with anyone else that needs it. Okay, appreciate that. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for the clarification. No problem. Any other comments? Thanks, Steve, you got covered on all your costs last year. Yes. No, no problem. No, there's just one conversation we'll have a little bit later regarding lights. Um, but that's okay. But everything else is okay. You're leaving the lights on. Yeah. No. We've been good. Very good. Very good group. Okay. Hey, thanks, Ricky. You're welcome to stay. We have some other. Visitors uh, here to talk um, from our sports, youth sports groups. And um, so it'll be a while before we get to the consent agenda. But um, mm -hmm. Jen can certainly give you a call tomorrow. Yeah, I can know. touch base with you tomorrow on what happens tonight. All right. No, nope. sounds good. Um, all right. uh, okay. So thank, thank you guys for letting me come in and uh, take your time and put in this request. Mm -hmm. um, We've been great working with Berlin. It's great facilities. Everyone loves them. So hopefully we'll be able to come back again this year. Great. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming thank on. You. Good luck. Okay. All right. Thank Anybody you. else here for audience of citizens? Okay. Hearing none. Um, if we could, we're going to just move the discussion for the youth groups before we move the minutes. Okay. Just so it's yeah. Just vote to move it up in the agenda. I make a motion to move the discussion with the youth group up to number two and move approval minutes to number three. All in favor? Thanks. Okay. Discussion with youth group presidents. Thanks, guys, for, for all coming in. Um, why don't we just go down the line? Just introduce yourself and what group you're present, representing so that we all know. Uh, Tim Sullivan, uh, here to. Help out Pam, so I'm going to first uh, go around with the folks. Nice to meet you. Lacrosse. Pam Gates for the lacrosse. Um, Tim's going to be helping with my scheduling for the program, so we're going to work together this year. Nice to have friends. Yeah. So, yes, grow, grow, grow. Yes. John Riley, but only soccer. Billy Pettit for a little league softball. Rolling Bulldog softball. Brian is up for a little league baseball. George is. It's uh, George. He's not. He's, uh, uh, oh, he is he's not. He's uh, just indisposed. He said he wouldn't be able to. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, you are Brian, Brian with a Y. Brian he's up C U P. Okay. 
All right, so I'm actually going to let Steve take the helm on this one. Um, perfect. Um, I'm sure you guys have known that this summer going into the spring is going to be extremely chaotic. Um, Pam, Pam's numbers are growing. We're renovating personal soccer and the stock to turn that into synthetic turf. So right now, fields are becoming tighter and tighter. Burlington High School has now got more into um, okay. unified sports. And at the same time, they're trying to get this ultimate Frisbee going using Soccer West. Um, I know primarily John and Burlington Soccer would like to use Soccer West and now with the high school trying to grab that. So we're running out of fields at a very quick rate this spring. And it, I think it's gonna continue for the foreseeable future. Um, we received several phone calls over the last couple of years of people driving by certain fields and them not being used and wanting to get on there, wanting to rent them, wanting to know why they can't use them. Um, youth groups calling, asking why we can't get on covered and such and such group is on there. Um, one group asking why they can't use Soccer West when there was no activities going on at Soccer West. And I think the last one that came in is somebody who wanted to rent Beretta, <coughs> drove by Beretta, and there was nobody there, and we had told them they couldn't use it, and they didn't want to know why they have to drive to West Hartford, East Hartford to use their fields instead of being able to use ours. Uh, we had kind of the same problem with the softball and the baseball. So I guess this is my probably fourth or fifth year going into this. What it seems like is we get blanket statements that we need every single field, every single day, sun up to sundown. And we don't have an answer to give the person on the other end who's angry. Like, why can't I use this field? Um, I'm a taxpayer. Why can't I rent this field? We don't have any answers. So I think what we're really asking you guys, and we've asked in years past, is if you guys can polish your schedule and really fine tune the times, the days you really need. Um, just because from a field maintenance, as we keep getting more fields and more land and more responsibility thrown on the grounds department, we don't have an endless supply of guys to go out and maintain every single one of these fields all the day, every day. Puccini, for example, I don't believe there was one game at Puccini last year. That being said, is we have a crew mowing that field Mondays and Fridays, making that field playable. We have a crew grooming it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have the school who is utilizing Gary and Cameron. And that field, we can't even get on as much to do the maintenance we want to do. So from a standpoint of a grounds perspective is, why am I sending guys up to mow and prepare a field that's not being used? We understand that weeds are going to grow. We're going to have to go through some scarifying. Um, from for Pam, it's she's wonderful to work with, and she doesn't have enough fields for lacrosse. So I, I guess my problem is I just want more open minds communication of what your real needs are from the grounds department, so we can help you guys. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw that coming into the spring <coughs> season that all games need to be emailed no later than Sunday night for the upcoming week. Um, any cancellations would be great. If we do not get an email, we're not gonna know that you have anything. So therefore we're not going to make it. <clears throat> we'll also we'll set a mowing it twice a week, we'll mow it once a week. We had the problem at Denny a couple of years ago where we didn't even know they were using it for Sandlot baseball. And these poor parents got there and the grass was six inches tall. That's not fair to the parents who had to go home, they got their lawnmowers, they went to mow the field, break the field, and unfortunately it rained the next day and all their efforts went to none. If we had a communication that, yes, um, uh, Rob Lebeck needed the field, then we would have prepared the field and instead it went by the wayside and we focused our priorities to maybe a Zippadelli, a Beretta, a Pettit field. Um, you know, and we've taken on more responsibilities with the less people that are looking to volunteer in Grown Little League. Um, Pettit field, we, I mean, for the first 20 years they were there, we never mowed. This year, we mowed those fields almost twice a week just because there was no help to mow. So that those resources, is, it might seem that it's getting stretched further and further. We've taken on almost a thousand acres of open space. Um, uh, Pistol Creek, the 16 acres that was just bought, the 57 acres that were bought prior to that. And that's all, that's all our responsibility that we have to get out to make sure that all these facilities are maintained properly and safe. Woody, can we take care of Pettit on our own if we have the resources? You can take, you can do whatever you want to any field inside of the gated area, yep. as long as it's outside the grounds hours, which is 630. And I had many conversations with Craig Bowman and Tom with yeah. them not having the availability. 
Um, Lavender back in the day used to mow it during town hours and they filed grievances. Um, there was a plethora of people, um, Samara at the same time was doing the same thing is, you know, a blue collar guy sees a guy mowing a field. The agreement has always been, you can't do it during town time. So just uh, the time again, if we were to, if I was to mow it, yep. what time can I mow it? 6.30. The three thirty. Six. Not that. Not that. I cannot. Yeah. Six thirty to three thirty. Yep. yep. And then weekends, same. Yep. Okay. Weekends they can't mow at all. No oh, weekends they can mow. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's yeah. only Monday yeah. to Friday, six to three thirty. Monday through Monday through Friday, six thirty to three thirty. And we told George and Patrick this when they Other took over as president. You can mow for three thirty Monday through after Friday after three thirty. Yeah. And then on the weekends. <clears throat> And George and everybody has been phenomenal to work with yeah. regarding it as well. Yeah, we have so an idea, so I'm just thinking for the some some occasions. Weekends, what time, what would you usually, you'd usually be there on Thursdays, if I remember right? Mondays and Fridays. Mondays, so Friday, so the, the, so the field would be fine for Saturday and Sunday if yep. they're on a Friday. Yep. Okay. All right. That's all. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that we talked about the last meeting was the fact that Non use, right? right? So, if Woody's out there, and it's not just baseball, it's it's everything. It's everything. Yeah. If Woody's and crews out there maintenance it, and then all of a sudden somebody sees they're not using it, it's it's a waste of taxpayer dollars because Woody's paying his team, right? So, that's one of the things that really kind of brought this to our attention again, which we've had a conversation a few years back about. That's why we wanted to bring the presidents back in. Just to, you know, we know you guys work very well with us, but we need to kind of Somehow figure out not to make that happen, allow that to happen any longer for your yeah. Your like point to Pulcini, well taken. We we get it, and I will certainly bring that to the board. Um, pet it. There's a lot of use of it. So the issue we have the miners now use pet it. Those two fields. That's right. Pulcini, and I will make sure we mention. So you want them to know. You want to know Sunday evening. Yep. What the, our needs are for the following week. Yep. Okay. But field, 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 field reservation uh, so forms. So I think we encourage that. I, I apologize, George. I think we encourage that to practice there. But again, it's minors. I don't know. They run one practice a week. Yep. Maybe two. Do, field, they, do they need finally cut grass? Probably not. But, but, but do so we want to provide that if we can? Yeah. So I will make sure I discuss it with the board that we're more transparent with our needs and are we truly using right, right. right. And that's that's it's saying. not all about it's not all about maintenance it's about the usage as well 100%. Right. right field 100%. reservation forms are due march 1st i don't have little leagues yet but yes. for the past i've been here six years this summer every single season little league books every little league field 4 30 to 8 o'clock monday to friday and 8 to 8 saturday 8 to 8 sunday yeah. every it's the same every single year <laughs> We're asking you to go back and really look before you submit your field reservation forms. Are you really using it that day? Yes. You know, George, George is aware of that. I know you okay. mentioned that, that you want to fine tune. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And and you want to buy March 1st? Yeah. yeah. And and you need March to 1st. read the policies and the forms. Everybody, please take a look because that's where they're put in these kind of control and, points. And it's not just for a little league. Right. Right. It's, it's yes. the same as the complaint that we got about Gary and Cheney. Came That's from not. a coach from Brown Little League complaining about the field. And it's like, so we emailed the back of all these issues. You know, what are your safety? He had a plethora of safety concerns, but what are your what are your concerns? Crickets. Then came um Brown Youth Soccer. And when we get a schedule, is if you guys are not starting till a certain date, tell us you're not starting a certain date because every time we go out and paint every single one of these fields and they're sitting dormant for three or four weeks in the fall. That's a lot of man hours and a lot of paint just going out of the door and out the door and out the door. It doesn't need to be painted every week if you guys aren't using it and starting until September 9th, but the request comes in for August 15th. And there's almost a month. You know? Understood. Sounds fair. That was it. That was really all we wanted to address. We thought instead of just getting another lengthy email from me and Steve, it would be easier just to have you guys here and hear it from Los Angeles sure. Commission. We're, yeah, just, we're just trying to fine tune things. And by fine tuning things, we're gonna have yeah. fields a better shape, to be honest. And I think one of the things that we're, we're gonna ask what you do this year is kind of monitor, right? Kind of put together some kind of checklist that says, 
you know, how many times based off the presidencies, you know, at least they have field or not or communication with the kids. We need, we need to somehow have that tracking system because at the end of the day, we don't have good information to go back to the public. So if someone calls me, I know to say what we're talking about here. So we're gonna add, that's one of the things that we're gonna try to tighten even from a commissioner's perspective, because not many of you, I think you probably know when I was here, was when we started this the first time. Right. Yeah, and, and I think John, what we said was, and you guys are all great, right? You guys help with whatever you need to help with, whether it's just, you know, putting it for, uh, not for less, speed dry, whatever you think it would be. But, but somehow, no, not for <laughs> speed dry. Um, you know, at some point, we may need to ask some of these leads to, to help support some, because there's only so much that wouldn't be seen. The budgets are really been tightened down. And a lot, and as what he said, his staff is doing so much more than recreational needs. You know, it's conservation committee, it's all these trails that we got everywhere. Um, so limited man, man resources, limited dollars. And then what we do know though, too, is some of the sports, you know, the numbers are down from what they were years ago. We might even have a couple more fields, but yeah, how come we're still using them? For the entire season, all the time, if the numbers are down, it would allow us to maybe use that field for something else that's grown. Um, and you know, for certain times, our our goal as a commission in the last few years is to try and get the council to think about fields that are multifunctional, and that's why you see we you know we've gotten the grant for Jorah Silver Hotel for Scaglia. That's going to be used for soccer for the high school youth, it's going to be used for football, um, the midget program, you know, just like we use um, SAGE, it's, it's, it's or SCLE, so it's, th those are the best fields. Lacrosse can use it, soccer, you know, everybody can use it, um, but when you need maintenance and you need people out there to maintain grass, and of course we all know our weather issues, it really gets expensive, and we're asking them to spend money, we got playgrounds we got to repair, he doesn't have the money in the budget. We can't get capital money with this council. You know, that's just reality. So, um, you know, we've had some discussions. You know, if you ever have any excess funds and you want to make a donation, honestly, Parks and Rec is a good place to make a donation for parents or whoever to help us build some kind of trust. A lot of towns do this. They build up a trust so they can supplement. And so, you know, think about parks that. and grounds, though, not parks and grounds. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to ask. To be parks and grounds. grounds. <laughs> well, we want to provide the best for these kids. And Have you ever cut to the teacup foundation? And they, they've, they've, they've given funds. Yes. Ryan Lee's have given funds, you know, for various things. Um, sometimes. We know what well. we, we know exactly. all do. Yeah. And sometimes with the foundations, you know, they want it directed to a certain thing. You might want it directed to a certain thing. We're here to kind of help everybody, all age groups. And so, you know, I I'm just throwing that out. Uh, I'm actually talking with a couple of towns that have trust funds. And I don't see any way, you know, reason why we shouldn't start, you know, people want to donate a few bucks and just let it grow for a little, little while, see what happens. So but we may get to that point, you know, so. Anyway, we do thank you though for all the support and all the help and, and the man hours and you know, Billy Pett's been around a long time and you know everybody has you know done a real good job. We just try to fine tune so it helps everybody including staff. Most well, you guys have been fantastic to work with. I can honestly say that. George and the new administration has made life so much easier. George has whatever coaches are responsible for those fields. They've been the ones sending it over on Sundays um, with Lebec and everybody, and that's been great with John Paul. So I can't I have no complaints there. That communication has been fantastic. If that's all for us, I just I need to put in a request for Sage for the football field. Yep, I emailed March George today. He just needs to send me the form. 18th and 19th. He just needs to send me the form and I'll see if it's available. I emailed him this afternoon. All right. Is that for clouds? Yes. No problem with snow. 
It's not going to snow all year long until spring sports starts. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which field is it? The football field. We use the turf for the oh. evaluations because we yeah. expect yeah. the yeah. grass to not be usable. So we'll just use those. When you said sage, I thought it was the softball. No, no. I was going to try to talk to Excuse me. Yeah. Did George uh, request at 18 19 of March? I don't have a request from George if that's what Ryan's that's saying. What yes. Be, yeah. End of 25th. <clears throat> 25th is Sage once uh, for is booked for Berlin High School. It is. I believe that's the date. I don't have it. I do have it. Okay. And Berlin High School. And you know, if the field was remotely dry, I would love to be on Centerella. I mean, I right. Yeah. Yeah. We we have a tryout of maybe 50 girls. I could do that in two hours. But it was just a, just in case, like Brian said, if yeah. it snowed. Berlin High School is March 25th, 9 to 3. On 9 Spanish, to 3, in okay. In case stage 1 is not playable. I mean, we've already gone out and started marking all the corners. We're going to go out and start pulling weeds on the baseball fields and softball fields on Monday. Like, we're just expecting spring to come early, and that's where we are. Like, all the corners are painted. We've got ready to line the cross and soccer. So. <laughs> You have to take advantage of it. Yeah. You, know, you, you mentioned that sidebar. I've spent many hours pulling weeds at Pettit. Kneeling down and pulling weeds for four hours. On the, around the, the morning track. The only thing we can do is laugh so and round up. We can't. We can't. So do you do it? Yep. You do. Yep. Okay. I and mean, we could try to get a pre emergent or something else. And That's what I'm saying. Longer. Um, those things get pretty embedded. It's. it's the noxious weeds, it's just very costly yeah. to stay on top of it. Um, I mean, it used to pay $79 for a two and a half gallon jug around them. Yeah. It's now two forty. dollars Yeah. I was doing that 20 years ago. Yeah, no, I know. Everybody's, everybody, <laughs> that kid in Little has been there. I mean, if you look at the like, you know, let those completely grow in. Is it the softball field, too? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes. Okay, Ruth Coach. I haven't seen it since I was like 14. Say he used to pull weeds too. Everybody in this room is all been there. I'm like, oh, why can't we just spread? So you do spread. <coughs> do it heavy. <heavier. laughs> so we're going to help. We can't help Billy on the 25th, right? So but it's Billy's is booked nine to three. So if you want to go after that, 26. So 26 is open as of right now. And, and this, like is I said, this, this is just an emergency plan. If for some reason Sterelli's really too wet and or thawing out, if we ever do freeze, and you want me to stay off Centerelli, it will be a quick hour and a half. If it's okay, run on the turf, let, let us do our thing for a tryout for a little bit. Yeah, the, school, the high school is not practicing on Sundays on Scalise. Oh, wait, hold on. And we've done this for the last 10 years. You know, high school baseball, high school softball will all be out on that field. Um, Co-mingling with lacrosse and soccer. Well, really just to send you an email. Yeah, you have to send me the form. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll send you. But I'm looking, the high school is not doing lacrosse practice on Sundays, so you should be okay. And Pam, you're not started yet. No. So. Right. And bait, Leo doesn't need it. No, Leo has not requested. Try, it. Trial it's only one night. Yeah, the only thing they requested it for was for um, softball. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll fill out the forms. Get it over here. Any other questions or comments or? You know, anything you want to share with the commission? Well, I just want to say everybody's been great to see John. I'm a big fan. Um, but also, you know, with John like and Greg, you know, we try to be as communicative and open as possible during the season. So if I have free fields, you know, on the day we're you know moving a game, it's you know the, what the struggle is the weather, right? Yeah. So when things get canceled and we have to reschedule. That then changes our schedule. So what would have been a practice is now a game, or we may have to go to a, you know, an opposing town as well. So that'll free up. So we try, you know, try to share whatever comes up. It may be last minute, 
So it may just be a quick text to Greg, hey, this is available versus, you know, it may be after hours, so you wouldn't be able to tell Jen and it's something you may not know on Sunday, but as soon as it is known, we, yeah. you know, we do try our best to kind of communicate that. But. Yeah, Berlin Youth Lacrosse and Berlin Youth Soccer over the last few years, especially, has been really cooperative with each other and that's made our jobs a lot easier. So we do appreciate it. Great. Okay. We do appreciate well, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the forms and the policy? You know, please get back to Jen and you know continue and re revise them almost every year. It seems like. Now I, I think have one more stuff. question on yeah, the sure. softball portion, and I know you were saying um, that Sage One would be closed. To Every until Berlin High School is finished. That basically takes Berlin Little League out of the equation because by the time Berlin High School is over, approximately June, June. Yeah, June. that is the same exact time that Berlin Little League is finishing their season. And honestly, with, I know the boys' numbers are kind of stagnant. I honestly can say the girls' number is growing this year, and I think I may have more teams than ever, meaning not ever, but <laughs> let's just say before COVID. Hit. So we're, we're actually going in the right direction. Um, and my only problem, like I've discussed before, I'm kind of limited to Centerelli and Hubbard, and I would have to get approximately – if everything goes, six teams. And McGee. I, okay, so 100% with McGee? Well, not when soccer's on it. We use it for the little kids. Yeah, as long as we do we put, we we do put the, the little softies, kids, yes. the little kids, who basically. Yeah, they're the only the ones that would be really able to play while soccer's playing. The infield. Yeah. But I mean, I just. And all due respect, and I was just respect. wondering the sage reason yeah, why Sage. Why not Sage 2? Sage 2 is lacrosse. That's lacrosse. lacrosse. That's lacrosse. lacrosse. Only lacrosse during the spring? And sometimes Berlin and soccer. soccer. That's yeah, kind of most I, I, for them. I have honestly never even touched Sage 2. Yeah, that's always been soccer and, and lacrosse. I know, and I've probably complained more than once Mostly lacrosse. that it's a softball field. It is a softball field. But, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, for Little League, I don't know, is there something we can revisit there just to let, even if we said just the two major teams, if they have to practice, you know, obviously they're going to go after Jason's all done with, you know, if he practices from 2.30, 3 o'clock to 5.30, that's usually when a Little League practice would start. I mean, is there anything we could revisit here? Just so you're saying LeBron Little League has the fields Monday through Sunday every day? Centerelli, Hubbard, and McGee? Well, but that's not enough. Every day? I mean, honestly, only the little kids would probably use McGee. Right. Like you said, like you said yeah. because of you know, soccer is using it, lacrosse is using it. So it's like, what? But, but if I just put the main, like, if I would just ask to put, say, the majors. So the bigger kids. The bigger kids. How many teams so that, would you have aside from the softies? He's talking about uh, stage so one, stage one. We would have no, possibly, knows possibly. He has three fields right now. As of today, there's already 17 softies signed up. So we're probably looking at two softy teams, one instructional, one minor. In two majors. So four teams, but Hubbard and Centerelli is not <coughs> enough for those four teams seven days a week? Not when everybody gets two practice. Well, when the games start. When the game, you know what I mean? Like, if everybody's limited to the two practices, which is about the norm, then when the games kick in, that, that would hurt me. You know, like, I would have definitely a game going on at Hubbard, a game going on at Centerelli. Well, maybe what needs to happen is that depending on how lacrosse and soccer figure out their deal over at uh, stage two, maybe that's going to free up an opportunity for you if they're not going to 
Okay. Yeah, that's so that, would, that would be I would be open to that. Sage, just, Sage just two will not practice. have availability. Excuse me? Sage two will not have availability. That field hasn't had availability since Berlin Youth Lacrosse numbers started to grow. Yeah, I've never done It's been a lacrosse field ever since Berlin Youth Lacrosse yeah, started because they just not, don't have enough. Let's not make the fields. decision for them, right? Let them make the decision and come back to you and let you know. Sure. I mean, I don't want Billy to just walk away saying it's a closed door. Oh, I know. The, the but, thing about Sage one, uh, just like Zippy Tell, let's put million dollars in Sage one and we made it to be the premier softball field. And I go in place. Right, right. So Medali the same. And because of that, you really need to take good care of it and keep it in top shape. And so for the months while the high school is using both fields, baseball and for softball, that's why we made the decision that no one uses those two fields during the softball and baseball high school seasons. It would be difficult for me, and but obviously it's a commission along with the staff. It would be difficult for me to reverse that, in my opinion, because of the money that we put in and, and the play level that we want to provide for high school. Make commitments. Make commitments. Oh, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's but, yeah, but we did it for good reason, absolutely. right? And so, and believe my kids, my daughters were all in softball. And, you know, I'm, I'm the biggest proponent, quite frankly, of softball. So um, that would be difficult. But if there's a way, you know, if there, if you really have a need, and that's why we're asking you, you, you know, look at your numbers, really figure out to the best of your ability what you need so that we can allow others to use it as well. And if no, there's I a way. I mean, I, I have another, what do you think, Brian? We're probably another month of signups. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if I could almost double my numbers yes. now, uh, maybe that was just a concern. I don't know. Right. I no, mean, we ex with all due respect. You know, I, I think we appreciate no, no, you bringing it up. No, you got to bring it, yeah. these things you got to bring to our attention. It's actually yeah. good to hear that. Yeah. That yeah. your numbers are going It up. is. It just yeah. looked like looking over the schedules from last year, it just looked like there was quite a few open dates on Centerelli, Hubbard, and McGee where those could have been utilized. Yeah. No. That's why they got to go back up their schedule and, and get the gen, and the gen will make a decision. Or can be done with okay. right. right. well, I think I've done pretty good with in the past. More I know when Terry was calling up and saying, "Hey, take this day, this day, this day, this day off," especially Sage. You know that, and I mean, yeah, that was I, only I, in I the summer. Though. I converse with you when to do the fields and where and. But it was always yeah, and you've been joined the back. We said, hey, don't turn on the lights. You haven't turned on the lights. <laughs> We've appreciated yeah. that. No problem. Well. I'll save the budget. I, I will I won't click on the lights for a practice. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I know the fields are a little different. Maybe there's pop, there's some openings for the baseball field for practice, as I said, or something. You know where you guys can work at that out. Yeah, I was going to throw it out. I mean, that's that's she oh, is in great shape. Yeah, like, I don't know why the well, might use it. It's true. Right. It's fantastic. <laughs> Even Gary, Gary, I wish, gets every, a little, I wish every field grew. Grizzle, Grizzle, Grizzle gets Gary a little. It's, it's hammer. Okay, it does. Hammer. It does. But so the boy, the boys not using it at all. Um, or we'll find out. I mean, okay. I have my own opinion. Good. Could we share well, it? I, make it a softball field? <laughs> well, oh, that's no. the field we want to turn on. That's the only problem. problem. You, got, you got a mound and you got. You, you, can't, you can't do it on a dime. <laughs> no, you I know, know that. Right? I, know that. I think the problem we're going to find with the 50 I mean, 70 there. We want to see a few good years of good numbers and everything. And then, right, basically, I'm using it, and there's a reason to consider it. And I don't think we have the room in left field. We're not going to do it right away. You know, we got to see it happen for a few years. All right. But maybe for practices. I know it's not ideal because it's different. And and that's practice. that's what it would and be the practice. Yeah. You know, that would once be the perfect. games once the games kick in, pivoted. Yeah, you're not going to play a game yeah. there. Yeah, that's a no, thing. no. I understand. No, but it's worth asking George because I don't see why Gary Bolchini couldn't be available to you for practice. It's not a softball field, but still right. good to be. Oh, for a practice. What do you need? Sure. Yeah. sure. Well, just like, I mean, McGee, you know, it's basically like I, we know that, you know, it's the little girls, uh, four, five, and six year olds, yeah. softies, literally the ball's not leaving the dirt. 
because of all the play around. So it does it, yeah, it won't, yeah. It won't affect soccer. It won't affect right. balls aren't getting hit out into the right. you know lacrosse field, right. baseball field. Yeah. Appreciate that. All right. All right. Okay, good discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a great year. Here. Yeah, Brian, all your equipment is good to go for the year. Service, laser sharpened, oh, everything's good and ready to go. Good. So Tom see. can start home. That's what I had in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks. All right, good morning. Good. Steve, thanks for yep. taking the lead. I think you explained things very well. I appreciate so, that. Tom. No. That's just Alan. Okay. Hi, Alan. <laughs> you good? Hey. <laughs> hey, what? Okay. Um, can we have a motion to approve the minutes of January 12th? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes for January 12th. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? I just have one item. I actually sent it to Jen earlier. Uh, on item 5C, um, discussion on fields, playground tours. <clears throat> if we could just either make that two bullets so that we have discussion of Hubbard or uh, Demore Dinda Pool separate from the playground tours. I gave Jen some wording, but the way it reads, it's kind of like it may be the same thing. Like Bove would like to, to visit little people. She did attend town council meeting and they understood, but. That was really about Demore Dinda. So we just make two separate bullets. I gave you some wording, John. Yeah, I'll forward it to Tiff. Okay. I mean, unless you have it and you want to read it for the record. Or... You want me to read it or? I mean, if you have it and then I can forward it to I just have what I sent you. That's what I'm going to forward her. So what I on. said is, um, okay, why don't we make one bullet, say uh, tours of playgrounds and, and then just put in that bullet. Uh, Commissioner Bove requested that we re tour little people's playground. And the second bullet would say Demora Dinda, you know, pool complex. And then say something like Commissioner Bove noted she attended a town council meeting, gave the council an update. And again, I'm just reading from what I sent you. Yeah, I'll follow On the issue of staffing, that is a state slash nation issue for summer pools and that we would update them in later February if we don't have enough staff to support two outdoor pools for the 23rd, 2023 season. She also provided an update on the physical repairs needed for DeMora Dinda um, uh, physical condition and noted that the commission will be reviewing attendance, costs to repair, and possibly looking at alternative options for the pool area such as splash pad with input from the East Borough community. Uh, as recommended by one of the town council members, we would do so, meaning get that input from the East Brown community um, at Hubbard School. Something like that. Yeah. Any other comments? Okay, so we have a motion. Um, and a second. Uh, have another motion to amend it? Close this motion. All right. We'll have a vote on the original motion to accept as presented. All in favor? No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not supposed to say it. <laughs> no, so. All right, no, 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 second no. motion. Uh, can I entertain right. a motion to accept one of the bathroom? It's as amended by our discussion tonight. I'll second that. And that, that was, uh, that was whoever. a motion yeah. by Tony. Yeah. Or yeah. One of us, right? You got it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, we have an election of chairperson, vice chairperson. We have four people here. Um, and, uh, you know, anybody is interested in being chair, I'm certainly willing to step back. That's not an issue. So, um, with that, I'd like to nominate Don as chairperson. I'll second it. Second. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All in favor. All in favor. Uh, okay. Thank you. I'd like to nominate uh, Donnie Delco as vice chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
And with that, one more year for me. So next year we will pass the torch, okay? Same here. <laughs> Sorry, I can't run. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I was saying on the commission, I just think it's good for other people to lead it. You get a little different flavor. Um, it, it's just, and it's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. This is the four of us. Yeah, I know. The <laughs> four of us will all, we'll all be co chairs. <laughs> okay, Which is one chair was that before. Right. So. No, that's right. So. All right. I just, so I we just, just selected the officials. Yeah, I saw. Okay. Um, <clears throat> consent agenda. Consent agenda. Um, can I have a motion to accept all items A through H on the consent agenda? Now, saying that, is there any, <coughs> any, any um, want a separate discussion on some? I, I don't. I, I I was just gonna see if we needed to talk anything more about A, but it sounds like we don't. So I'm cool with that. There's always been discussion in your class. <laughs> right. No, I know. If you want, all right. Let's have a motion on B through H. No, that's fair because you came. So we'll just a motion on B through H to adopt the consent agenda. I'll make a motion that we uh, um, we pass our vote on the consent agenda. For B through H. Second. Any discussion on those items? I'm just going to throw something out with uh, regards to Scalise and the usage of lights. Um, I've been tracking the usage of lights for the last year, and I was hoping to bring them tonight, but I'll bring them next mm -hmm. time. It's just when we start thinking of renting out Sage and Scalise to non youth groups, we should start looking at how, how often the lights are going to be used. And really, what are we charging them for that? I, I'm pretty sure, I think they're looking for the lights and it's going to cost, they're going to pay like twelve or $1,400 for the lights. You're talking about nutmeg? Nutmeg. Okay. Is that, is that that's egg? not part we're of the motion. Okay. We're waiting. Okay. That's okay. We're all out now. No, no, sorry. I thought we were talking about that. No, not yet. Yes. <clears throat> so B through okay. H, he but, seconded it. But to your point, though. We'll, we'll go, we got to go B through H first. Okay. <laughs> he seconded it. Yep. Now right. it's all in favor. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, now it's consent done. agenda. Okay. So those items are done. Okay, consent right. agenda, consent agenda item A. Make a motion. All right, so I'm sorry about that. The motion was made to discuss. Right, to discuss. Is there a second? To, to accept a, a seconded by one of them. I'll second it. Thank right. you. And now discussion. discussion. So to finish, and that's kind of my only thing is I think it was $1,400 that we're going to charge them for this upcoming season. For the amount of uses they're requiring for the lights at three hours a minimum per day with the new fees so that's what that's going to be and that's included in the 6950 yeah and that's included uh jen is that included in your 6950 no those are just field waiver fees they mm -hmm. pay the lights they pay the lights they pay the lights if they were going to cut this usage in half or drastically reduce the usage of Scalise field i think we should look at what they were going to use for lights and maybe put a mor moratorium that after 7.30, all of your games need to be over and done with. But I think that's something we look at next year. And we'd already talked to Rick regarding what the lights were gonna cost. He understands the cost is gonna go up drastically this year than it has in previous years. Mm -hmm. So, but I just think it's full transparency that if somebody wants to come in and rent, say it's the semi-pro football team, say they wanna come in and rent Scalise and they wanna have a night game and they're gonna turn those lights on for two hours. We just did a light test the other day, and we'll have an accurate number next month of what it really cost for two hours. We got to, just to be conscientious of my budget. I think that's the reason. Well, what we should probably think about is just doing a flat fee. Put a fee in. A, fl a flat fee for lights, whether you know whether it's. I mean, depending on what the usage is, I'm not. You know, but I mean, I'm speculating it's probably the two hours that we turn the lights on a couple weeks ago. I think it's going to be like seventeen hundred. So we're not going to charge a flat rate of 1700 I think there, I think uh, Nutmeg Games is one of the only groups that uses it besides Polonaise to pay for the lights. But when Polonaise uses the lights, right, they're yeah. using it in conjunction with every other activity right. that's going on. Right. So it's just those random July, June, July, and August events that really tax the budget. Um, and I have the numbers of what 
I think Rome literally uses a Benelli for like three weeks, and I'll have those numbers next week with next but, meeting as well. But but when, isn't there a minimum usage of lights anyways when they rent the field? Three, three hours. hours. Three yeah. hours. So you're saying two hours is roughly 17? Yeah. Okay. So hope we have too many people running. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just it, it, we charge yeah, 65 and right, right. Yeah. 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 So that's why, yeah. So the high school, I mean, so maybe it's okay for maybe it's flat rate zero to four. And it is what it is. So maybe the only with, people with that use school, lights are right? the high school and youth. And this tip for Tad on fees and things like that. Do you absorb months. all the light fees in your budget? I, res I, I absorb everything that goes on outside of any town facility. Grounds rule. Okay. What I'm asking is high school uses the field for football, mm -hmm. night games. Yep. Seems like it. It hits your budget. Yep. You don't allocate that back to the to the board of ed, like they charge us for their custodial fees. Right. See, that's where but it's, but it's that's good. Where, <laughs> but they don't charge us for building fees. Like right. and all. they used and to. We don't charge them for field fees. Right. fees. Right. But that is like over like building, I agree. Field, I agree. I hate the tip. But we don't charge it. them for the way. But I'm saying this it's is incremental. This is a variable rate. It's not. This is variable. Cost. Correct. They don't charge us for the lights that we we're the only ones who use the lights at Hubble. It's a wash. Okay. We don't charge, they don't charge us for the so lights. So they at, pay for the lights on the Hubbard. At Hubbard, they pay for the lights on the tennis courts, the basketball. It's, it's, of, a, it's a wash and it, we're not looking okay. down. It's just it. full transparency of you know, the eighteen or twenty-four thousand dollar line item for yeah. Scalise Field. Right. It's large. I mean, my, my electrical bill, electric but certainly for eighty out. something thousand dollars. So it's gone up, right? Yes. For for profit organizations, non, you know, um, non town non youth groups or whatever, we should have a fee in there for it. Why would we rent we, it? We, to do, we, do, we, do, we do have light fees, sixty five dollars yeah. an hour. For sure. But what I'm saying though is we've got to have more reasonable light fees. And I think. For for profit. I think the I think the light fees are reasonable and everything is great where they are. But for somebody to come in and want to use the field for seven days and ask for free, and ask for free is not. They're, they're not asking for free. No, they're they're asking for the license for field. <laughs> nice off. Fees. Yeah, but you're speaking it correctly, so I just want to make sure. They're asking for free. Right, they pay for the lights. Right, they pay for the lights. Years past, they did not. And what so, do they pay? Are they paying the sixty-five dollar rate? Yeah. Are they paying his which comes out to like fourteen hundred? So it's only a difference of three hundred dollars. As long as they use the nights for every all the lights for every night they're said they're going to use it. So you ask the question, are you really going to use the fields for every single yeah. night? So if they cancel half of their games on Scalise, we're going to absorb more of that cost. And just you think. said it costs 1700 when you put them on for two hours. Yep. But isn't that two hours every night? So isn't that then 3400 yep. then another? You pay for the initial draw per month. Okay, it costs seventeen hundred for two hours. Well, we'll know for sure when we get the report. Right, just say, just say seventeen hundred yep. for two hours, and how much do we charge? Sixty-five an hour. So, okay, which is comparable to one hundred and fifteen hundred and seventy dollars. Our light fees are comparable to other towns. Can you explain? No one makes their money on light fees. Okay. Can you explain the draw? So you yeah. so can you explain that? So the transformer, and no, we were probably going to replace the transformer. So Eversource supplies the power to the transformer. So that transformer carries enough power. So whenever that light switch is flipped, that transformer can disperse the amount of kilowatts that are to that field. So right now we draw 130 kilowatts as soon as that on. So that transformer, the breakers and everything, the meter has to be able to control that power, to be able to handle it. So you pay for the initial draw. That's what we found out in Zipidelli a couple of years ago. So, I mean, if you're, what you're saying though is if you use them on consecutive nights, there's not going to be an additional draw on right. it. Right. Because you've already paid for that. All right. So that's, that's all right. I get you. Now. That's why the cost. Right. It'll be interesting to see what, right. what the costs are. I think that that's a fair point. The other mm -hmm. thing to think about as we think about fees for next year is the score, the new scoreboards. If people are going to be able to use the new scoreboard outside groups, just say not big games or whatever, there's a, there's a cost to run that scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, we've never rented out the scoreboard. and Yeah, that's going to have to be discussed. Because yeah, because board that's going to be the right, one right, right. running that. So yeah. this is not going to have to pay for somebody to run it. Yeah. Right. And then and can, the could you advertise sport? on it? That's right. their plan eventually. I don't really know. That's cool. So it would, no, what, what I just asked Jen is, is that 
maybe these groups can advertise on it and another way to get revenue. I believe that's their plan. Oh, yeah. that was that's the plan. Plan. Yeah. The whole yeah. curriculum has to be added to the school. Yeah. But just to throw another so, one wrench in that, as soon as they upgrade those lights to LED, yeah. the, the draw in that whole entire facility is going to be cut by 75%. Ooh. So at that point, that scoreboard is going to become a new point because it's not really going to yeah. draw. So getting back to consent agenda A, yes. Um, are we doing anything with the lights at all for this year other than what he already knows? Nope, we're good. You don't want to limit their time in the evenings? Nope, because it's a wash. It's a $300. The way I'm figuring it's going to be a $300 if difference. If they use it for every day. Yep. What if they come back and they only want to use it for like two days? Is it worth having another conversation to determine if we're going to let them use it for the evenings? If that's what we find out, we want to bring it back to them. I'm all in favor of that as well. Okay. So then, if, we, if they only use it for two nights, you shut them off for the rest of the night. We'll, we'll, lock, we have, we'll put a different lock out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So so we have the motion. Uh, discussion. Any further discussion on A? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our correct report. Yep. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have any I saw the advertisements for the um, yeah. um positions. Positions. Yeah, and then it was funny because after the meeting we had here, I think two days later, I was watching the news, and other towns were also struggling to find lifeboats. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. And they were advertising it that some of the pools may not be able to function. Da, 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 da. And, then, and then they were talking about the Red Cross, all the things you brought up last meeting. Yeah. They brought up on the news. It's, it's, it, the world has changed, that's yeah. for sure. You know, the lifeguarding used to be like the best job that yeah. you know, so, 100 applications for it. So thank you, because it was an education and I saw it on the news. So thank you for that. Debbie, um, your last report last month talked about a finance policy that could jeopardize this one. Or this one? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is this policy? So we are <clears throat> part of the Central Connecticut Swim League. We pay a flat fee at the beginning of the season to join the league. There's about 13 towns, I think, in it. And then when we do championships at the end, there's a, a, they call it a splash fee for each participant. And basically those fees cover the championships if there's any cost to rental facilities, any awards that they're giving out. I mean, it's it just goes back into support the lead. So when I had put a request into the finance department for the check to cover the $250 fee, they informed me that I, I needed to get a W-9 from the Central Connecticut Swim League in order for them to pay the money. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to the secretary, treasurer, and then the, my other contact and they told me they don't have any kind of TIN, so they weren't sure what to do. So basically, as the season went, I was still trying to I was trying to work with Kevin. Like I didn't really, I don't really understand. Like we never had an issue before. Now we have an issue. I'm reaching out to them, looking for information that they say they don't have. They don't have any issue from any other town. Every other town still pays them, but Berlin will will not pay them. So they I talked to the, the woman at the end of the season. And now these people that run it are just part-time people. So I, I talked to her at the end of the season and she said, well, we, we talked about it and you know we'll, we'll let Berlin go. Like I I mean I can't continue to have our swimmers go to a program that we should be paying a fee to and we're not. I, I mean I think that's ethically that's a problem for me to to do that. I mean it's this this class is going to to benefit the people in the that are participating, and so why should Berlin get a free ride? I just I don't really agree with that, and it's unfortunate, but we're, we're kind of, I'm kind of stuck in the middle because when I when I reach out to them, they said they don't have this information, but finance said that they're incorporated, so they have to have it, yeah. and they won't pay without the information. So. so we're in kind of a when you get, when you give them the fees, you pay them by a check, right? Yeah. And where what do they do with the check? Like how do they get the money? They have a bank account. They probably have an account. It's the same thing like our Berlin 
the Berlin swim, the, the dolphin boosters, I can no longer give them a check because they're not an incorporated group. They're just a bunch of parents who have a checkbook to, so I, they no longer get a check from the town to help support the so, but if they program. have a bank account, they have somebody's tax ID number mm -hmm. on that account. Not necessarily, no, not really. It would be a social security number. It could be a social security number. And they have to give that to us. So, right. so, but, but the thing is about these tax ID numbers is there is more and more attention being paid to these groups right. that are getting these funds. And without a tax ID number, you know, they're supposed to file some type of tax form. It's very easy. I, you know, you, you know what boosters do. I do it for the uh, Hall of Fame. We have our own tax ID number. And, you know, I, I understand, but they're telling me they don't. So I, I just, I don't see how we can continue. No, I know, but I understand the finance department yeah. saying we can't pay. No, we agree with just that. Right. No, we agree with yeah. No. I just want you to know that because I am not going to continue <clears> to have <throat> our people participate if we're not able to pay the, the money that we should be paying, like every other community. And it's not for lack of trying throughout the season. I saw yeah. the frustration yeah, going that's between finance and the group. Well, yeah. right, it's on them. Well, I can't we do can't anything. offer this as a, we can't offer our swim team participating with these other towns, right? I mean, I just, mm -hmm. and I tried again, I reached out to them at the end of the season and no one gets back to me. And again, they're just part-time people. Right. They're just kids basically that run this league in the, you know, seven weeks of the summer. Yeah. I don't, I mean, this league's been in existence long before I started right, working. Right. And there's that. never been there's never issues now. They're tightening down. I someone mean, suing them or anything like that? Not that I am aware they of. They don't have any insurance? I, I don't Probably know. Not. I mean, it's not, I don't. Yeah. So it's the town goes. Well, they don't need insurance because we're participating. So if someone swims at our pool, then the town has insurance. When we hosted swim meets because we posted that when we reserve a pool say we reserve maloney the town of Berlin provides a certificate of insurance for that for maloney yeah. yeah so it's whatever town is hosting the event is responsible to provide that and that's never been an issue or a concern with the town doing that so this it's similar for like we offer the nysca program for basketball coaches it's a 20 dollars fee it's a national organization you watch a video so we say you watch the video and then when you complete it, give us, send us your receipt, we'll, we'll refund you the $20. Well, I can't refund the $20 now unless they fund a W-9 and they won't do it. They don't want the to do it. They don't want to do it. I no, sent I it out and, and, they, and the other people that sent me the receipt and have not filed up to get the reimbursement because they don't, they don't want to submit that to the town. So it's, I get finance has this. Unfortunately, they put this kind of in place without knowing until I try to get a check and then sure. it, so it, isn't there a way to, to do you have kind of cash the, the, can't yeah. do it can't because then how do you reimburse mm -hmm. yeah so isn't there a way that the check is made people can talk cash. to the finance director and to see if there's I understand why they want to do it right one of we're starting a sponsorship program this year <laughs> we're, we're setting a W9 to go next speed right we're creating an invoice we've never had an invoice for the or I, I told him, well, don't be surprised if it's like zero, 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 one. But anyway, um, so I mean, couples are doing it. <laughs> anyway, but but the thing is, I would have to think that there's a way around that. I mean, you can't. There, there, there is not, because there's not. They're every there's year. They can't have a random $300 payout to someone who is not paid properly by the law. These people are also have their act together. And right. and they, and but, I, but I can't control that, so I'm right. letting you know. You can't, you can't participate in this league anymore right. because I'm they're, not getting information. Just so that I understand, their, their comment to you was, you don't have we'll, a, we'll let Berlin come in. For that for last summer, I can't, I'm, I in good faith, I can't have us in this program year after year. Yeah, when we're supposed right. to be paying over $300, right. letting us go for free. That's, yeah. that's, that's against my ethics. Do the swim team, do they pay a fee to us? No, they pay a fee to the general fund to participate. Right, to the, to the general to fund the town. to participate. I, I cannot do that. If I am told that someone wants to direct me, then I would want it in writing, but I cannot in good faith just 
have our have our kids swim for free when everyone else is paying. All the other towns are paying. It's just not right. That's it's just surprising that so many towns aren't doing it now because it, there is a crackdown on this. And so I, I mean, I, I get it, but I'm just letting you know I've tried. I've exhausted my resources trying to resolve this, and coming into this season, I cannot in good faith say we want to be part of this league and just ride on everyone's coattail and not how, pay leave. How, how many people are involved with the program? The, the, the swim team. Yeah, swim team. Our swim team? Yeah. I, it varies. I mean, our numbers are low. Best guess. Probably 50 last year. That's well, 50 high. divided by 250. Right. I mean, that's it. So who's going to pay the money? But the, yeah, the money is still going I mean, to the general fund. Really they pay their fees to the no, general. No, no, and we, so, so the thing is, if there's 50 people, you ask them $5 each in cash. And then you give $250 in cash. Or they, the swim team, gives $250 in cash to this organization. Because that's all they're doing. They're, it's right. cash. That's what they're doing. But, but, the town can't pay for it because right. no tax ID. I, 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 I can't be part of that. that. No, no, no. Why can't you be part? It's just like a team. Parents are always asked for these types of things, like $5. Because for this. then it's Wait. us, the town, initiating no, no, no. a loophole, essentially. Okay, right. so if I, like that's, I'm suggesting this. Yeah. If I were you, I would go to the SWIM team members and say, look, it, for us, to actually participate in this organization. But they're they're gonna say we're already paying $120 yeah. to the town to participate. What and then they're gonna so, pay additional. So we're money. just so you're paying $120, but you use that $120 for something else. Well, it covers mainly the staff because we have right. right. So so if some of that 120 that you figured out to charge them was for this group, take that out of the 120. I can't do the half. The money the is fees to the town, the system. The, the, the town council just adopted our fees last time. Okay, so, so all that goes so to the general fund. So then 120 is collected and parents, swim team, unbeknownst to us, there is a policy now in town that we can't pay a vendor, which is this group. What if some parent says I don't want to pay so, for us to be involved with that group, we're going to need the swim team group to pay cash of a total of $250 to that group. The way we could do that, there's 50 of you. If everybody could contribute $5 in cash. But if they say they don't want to, you don't have that group. You can't do it. They won't participate. But, 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 they yeah, take a lot of leaves. That's it. This, this is the only one. That it's the only one that I'm aware of. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'll go with the council the and explain that. But so if you <laughs> included that fee and that 120, then I'll go to the council and say, yeah. oh, we're going to change that. And this is the reason why. So that these kids can. No one's going to be. <laughs> Seriously. As an employee, she is saying telling us she ethically does not. No, I, I realize that. Thank so you. we should be telling her what she should do or how she should go about it. It's well, her. Well, no, no, it's okay. It's a, it's, it's a, I'm not telling you. I said if if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not telling you to no, do it. Yeah. I'm not, Debbie. I'm not. I'm saying charge them for that two hundred fifty dollars, but. You said they carry to pay 120 in the town. And if that 120 included something for this, I'll go to the council and say, we're going to change that fee now to reflect a reduction because the parents. <clears throat> well, who's going to collect the money and make sure that the league gets paid? I can't do that. I don't know. I've already been told unless there's a, unless I have a tin, I can't give this group money. Um, so, so I'll go to the council and um, so identify the fee of 120 includes the swim team. Well, I mean that we've always had a fee. It mainly covers the staff costs. There are yeah. other costs in the budget. We have some, you know, minor costs. How, how do you come up with and, 120? Just I have no idea. That I mean, I. But so there's now, always been a fee, and I've just raised it. Now with every registration, them. there's going to be a disclaimer that there's no swim team. Well, there's no way for us to support for the it. town to pay. That's why I'm letting you guys know this in February that there was an issue and as we get into the season, you know, I don't even know what parents, because it changes every year, yeah. right. which parents are running the boosters, because when their kids age out, then they don't do it. They, listen, the town has nothing to do with that checkbook. 
It's, it's yeah. their checkbook. So I don't know who's on it, whose name it's in, which is under, under the issue. You know, but right. that's not, that's, again, that was way before I came on. So I'm sure the town said, we don't want to be associated with that booster. Right, right. Club. So that's how everything is handled. Yeah. Now I could, you know, could I say that? Yeah, but again, what if people say, well, I'm already paying a lot of money. I don't want to pay anything. So I'm then they don't. I'm not fine not competing. I'll just do the practice. So they don't participate, but then how do you have a swim team come down and you have five five kids then? And now are they is the five going to have to pay the two hundred and fifty dollars? I mean, there's no, 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 no. I, I, that you know I totally I mean? understand. Yeah, but but that's where I'm saying. Then we go to council and we change our fee to reduce it, and then that group, that swim team group, comes up with the fee. The cash to pay that fee for your two hundred fifty dollars, but we reduce the fee that we gave the council because that seems to be the issue. And well, it's also and the issue. Council it's also the issue if you have fifty kids, but only only twenty of them decide that they're going to pay to be in the league. The other ones are like, I'm, not, I'm okay not being in the league. I just want to go to practices. Then you don't have. Then you don't have two hundred and fifty to pay the membership. Be part of it. Don't they want to like, swim? If they don't pay the one twenty, they're not going to be part of it, right? They go to swim, right? They, so there's two. You know, unfortunately, two separate fees to pay. If you don't pay both of them, you can't be part of it. The town but will we can't collect the second fee. Right. So how do well, we know that people are paying it? it. Well, they would but have I can't be part of that collection. Well, how, no. how would that money get to the That's fine. Right. 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 Be up to so you identify a head of the group, and they're responsible to collect that and make that payment. Outside of the town. You know, I mean, that's... So what happens if they can't get the 250? That's then, I mean, then, because that's I, we may not have... Issue. I mean, I don't know how many swimmers that's are going to have. Our numbers, we used to have over 100 swimmers, but... Once COVID right. hit, that right. our numbers are really low. Is so, they can't, I mean, that has to be explained to the group. Well, uh, then, so, so, uh, but how do you explain it? So then they go, well, I paid the 120, but now we're we're not participating in this. Or at least if we're telling them up they front, get their money back, right? If they're not going to participate, they get the money back. Be fine. You know, I, mean, I think we're looking at this wrong. I think the fact of the matter is that the, the, this entity. Needs to do what's what's right, which is to get a tax ID number and phone right. number, and, and in order for them to be able to participate. If they don't, then they can't participate. I, I think that's what someone in the town has already alerted, and told you right. what you've gone to these people and told them. Right. Okay. I, I think I'm more than one occasion. I'm more than one occasion. I'm just trying to create. No, 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 I, I, I think that. Well, I really don't. Right. You you know, we can still have a still have it. They could still, you know, it's not. It is. People do like it. They like it to get ready for high school. I mean, that's very important to do it. But here's, here's, a here's, here's a recommendation. Here's a recommendation. Someone, whoever that someone is in the town, maybe drafts a memo. No, I'm the, everything's been put back on my shoulders. Yeah. Okay. As much as I've tried to have the finance department help me out, basically, so no, it's my, basically it's my problem. It's our vendor. Yeah. So well, I, I've tried. Okay. And you, and you've communicated everything to these people yes. and they've not been like responsive. Three times. We've literally sent them yeah. the email from Kevin or the website, so, one of the two, yeah. saying, so, so, this is showing us and, that and you have maybe, a tin. Maybe, from Donna's perspective, maybe you know who the point person is for the parents of I this group? Reach, I can reach out to one of the people from last year. So yeah. maybe you go to them and do what Donna's saying and say, listen, this is not going to work based off of the tin number, blah, blah, blah. If you want to do something, you need to contact these people and figure out those arrangements and, and that's it. And let it let it okay. put it back on either the parents, the boosters, whoever those people are. Yeah, and right. at least otherwise they're not gonna have a school team. Or right. they, they won't be able to compete. Yeah. I think I think right. that's what you do. They can still do practices, which some of the older kids like. I, to I mean, I think we can anyway. still do some form of right. some then this, in-house yes, competition. It's, then, it's, then it's out of your hands, yeah. it's with the parents. But the parents deal with it with the school. And until you know that, then don't collect the 120. Right. Don't give them money. Well, but I think we should be should give it an option to still people. offer a program. Yeah. Because yeah. people oh. still may want to swim. Why don't you start? Okay. With so you want so you're going to oh, offer a program separate from this group. That's that's what you're going to do. Yeah, we're gonna do. We're going to offer. They want to do the group. Yeah. They have to do it themselves. They come up with the 250 and they get. They contact that group. Whatever they want to do is that's over and above what the Whatever town parks and rec department does. Yeah. Right. 
So you and you're collecting 120 to provide them this, whatever but, this is. What was part of that competition? Not the 120. The fee. Yeah. Well, the, the fee gets paid to the town. Right. As part of the general fund. It, I'm sure a portion of that covers it, but most of it covers the staff fund. Yeah, a very small portion. portion. And transportation. And, and, probably, can, and, and there's buses, you're talking four or five hundred dollars. Right. And there's the, right, the town subsidizing yeah. over and above the 120. Yeah. The 120 is a piece of what the town provides. Right. You're gonna still you'd still do that piece of it. I think people would still want to do okay, something. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Then you have that it's separate just conversation. conversation. Right. But so but, but so basically the town is subsidizing the bus trips, right? So it's subsidizing the whole thing. Oh, I understand, yeah. but the bus trips are part of it, right? right. So, yeah. so then, if they do it on their own, why would the town pay for the bus? They're not doing it. They're just paying the fee. All right. Right. There may be but why fewer the bus trips because yeah. they're not going to participate with that. It's other just. Group. The, it's just. But the they're still out of the cost. Yeah. Huh? Just move on. That's what I think too. I want to consider doing something formally. <laughs> I mean, I can reach out to a parent, but I don't know. They may not know if they're going to be involved. Yeah, so, so, I mean, that's the only problem. If their turnover is... Do you know, know, right, right, we know that. that. We know. Yeah. Do you guys, do you talk to other towns to see what they're doing? Like in, yeah, she said, said that. They're not, they're, they're not, they don't care about the TIN number. Only Berlin cares about it. Well, if they're getting paid from their finance <laughs> or their program's doing it. But don't forget, these a lot, but look at the towns. Rocky Hill, year-round. Weathersfield, year-round. South Windsor, yeah, everyone has year-round programs, so they can do all that. Right. Rome does not. Right. Rome is just a little piddly program in the right. summer. But what I'm right. saying, well, right. what I'm so they can build up. They maybe have money in their account that they can do that. Right. We so, can't even give them three hundred dollars for a picnic. I got to have them order pizza, and then I have to pay the pizza vendor because I can't even give them the money anymore. So, what my thought was, though, <laughs> it's, no, 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 no. If other towns are doing it, right? They're I would I would guess that everybody's starting to clamp down on, on W nines, right? That they're going to start doing it too. So, well, so I'm just saying, if if you guys got together, or somebody talked to the whatever that group is down there to, to go form to send it, uh, to get a uh, you know a, a tin number, all right, then maybe that would solve the problem. I don't think it would, I don't think it cost anything. But if other towns aren't having a problem, then it's not it's not an issue for them. Well, I got go. another solution that I'm not going to say. <laughs> I was move on. All right, that, that's what we suggest to do. But Debbie, if you, I'll go to the town council and I'll let them know this is an issue. If you think it's an issue, I don't mind go. Oh, they, I can't pay. I can't pay the lead. Yeah, I'm just telling you, no, I cannot pay for that. Town council is going to stand like, by the board of the town finance oh, yeah, policy. Of not paying somewhere without my deputy. Is Thurston about? No, their kids are. I mean, Emily's a coach, but she has nothing. to do. Nothing to do with it. Okay. She has nothing. I can, I'll reach out to, I know there are a couple of parents. Okay. And then let me know. Okay. Because then I don't mind, I, I don't mind going to the council and saying, you know, this is going to be a slim down swim team. We're not going to be able to allow them to participate in the school. That's a good idea. I don't think, well, I don't think, I don't think it's relevant to even go to council. It's not going to change okay. You're not going to have enough staff to open up cupboards. I have got no applications. So Even as of tonight, nothing. I got, I got one for a new lifeguard swim instructor, but their lifeguarding is expiring, so they need to get it recertified before I will even interview them. And I've got nothing else. And, and Tip was kind enough to, um, I sent her the flyer and posted it at Central to try to get word out. Um, but yeah, I've got nothing. And the deadline's March 3rd, so tend to wait and that's like nothing i only have one summer camp application so i so do we wait till march then to make a decision i mean we could the deadline's march 3rd i won't be at the march meeting but i can let you know what the can you I mean, the numbers are wait. but i mean i just don't need to make a decision i've had no phone calls no inquiries nothing so and when i know we had a discussion so when do should we make a discussion for the or make a decision for the upcoming year or however? Whatever the latest date Debbie knows, we're going to look, we just cannot do anything with the waiting pool. Waiting pool is right. yeah, no, yeah, we just 
Yeah. No, we're not going to be able. We know with the step, we won't be able to cover it. So that that's out. So. Okay. So Jen, could I ask you to let um, the town manager know? Because I did say that we would let the council know. You know, by the end of February, just say that we're going to let them know by the end of March. We'll give them an update by the end of March. But as of right now, there have been no applications. When do we plan to have a meeting with public affairs? Well, that's a separate discussion, right? Yeah. That's the discussion. Yeah, but I over the pool. That I think need to happen now. So. I think yeah. we need to do some work. Um, that's more accurate. So, all right, that's opening the pool for this year. As far as Hubbard, the repairs and everything, there's more work for us to do to understand, you know, costs that Steve has gotten. We were going to talk to a vendor, have a vendor come in either through Zoom or whatever. Um, you know, personally, I'd rather understand and reopen it this year and then start attacking that. Does that make okay, sense? Fine, yeah. okay. Um, does Rock the Roll ice cream truck have to come in? We got approval. I'm sure she will. When I emailed her, she was in Aruba, so she's yeah. Yeah. but she, she was she, on the March agenda last year. Yeah. So yeah. I guess it should get yeah, done. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. I was kind of early doing it, but I'm trying to my unfortunately my program coordinator had resigned, so I'm back to a uh, one person um, department. So I'm trying to get all the field trips and stuff booked for summer because I've got a lot of other stuff coming up. So oh, I'm sorry. Um, didn't we say in March last year that we weren't gonna make her come in yeah yeah she won't physically have to come in i'll just put her on the agenda yeah but she's i mean she's, but she hasn't even reached out to me yet like i said i'm sure she will yeah and she she said that sounds great so she's excited about that. Okay. your program coordinator resigned yes keep on keep the yeah. board already gone yeah. yeah so you're going to be looking for oh. i've been advertising for over a month again now that one Tina hired one a couple months ago. It was the only application, and she's since resigned. So Tina will also, is also posting for a program coordinator. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, Debbie? Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Steve. Pretty much just trying to stay busy. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Next. Uh, so little people's just a question. Yep. Um, actually, a friend of mine brought her two grandchildren up there, and she said it was, you know, not bad shape, but you know, pretty good. I mean, we got a uh, Debbie and I got an email last night from a lady, um, pretty lengthy about a bunch of concerns. She has 700 and something followers on his Berwyn parents' uh, Facebook page. Oh, okay. um, I talked to her today for probably a good 10 minutes, explained where we're at, where we're, what our vision is moving forward. Your question was on. Playgrounds? Yeah, her, her question was on playgrounds, specifically little people's. Um, we got it. She got into the same thing most people get into of, you know, oh, well, parents are bringing toys there and, you know, the kid, and she's supposed to put it on her forum today that we discourage anybody from bringing any outside equipment to town playgrounds. They're not certified. They're not safe. We don't know where they came from. We don't know if there's sharp edges on them. We don't know if they're broken. Mm -hmm. And she was going to take care of that. Um, I told her, I said, you know, you being such part of a large group, if they have ideas or something they want to bring to, towards us, please do. We're more than willing to hear suggestions. I mean, it's the only way we're going to really get a uh, feeling of what parents want is if they bring it to us. And she was okay with that. And we stay in touch. Good. Yeah, so I was going to go back to um, the woman that came and spoke to us. I have her email address and just go back and say, you know, I'm just kind of interested in what age group is what I understand is little people's not in bad shape to use, you know, certainly for kids are under school age, little people's not bad. I mean, maybe for a four year old, it's kind of out of it, but I'm going to do that. And then with Hubbard, I mean, with Willard School, we're meeting with all three playgrounds, well, all three playground companies over the next seven days. I hope to have some type of conceptual design for. Willard by probably eight. so and the committee is working towards that 2024 it, probably yeah there's nine people on the committee and nine people with nine totally different visions of what they want their playground to look like which we kind of knew it was going to happen but you have to have yeah um, but that's basically it this um this group I'm I'm just interested in maybe commission members you know if they're so active great 
when we want to join the commission. Maybe you just, you know, think yeah, about that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They've been around a long time. They know. They're... They know. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay. All right. Talk later. Okay. Any questions, Steve? Um, do you have any more um, dogs must be on a leash signs? <laughs> Tony's our <laughs> 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 He wants. <laughs> Steve? That I don't know if I have any insight. <laughs> <laughs> but I will pass along to our weekend. The, the, signs, the signs on the ad that was in Citizen, it's not working. So for me, walking where I walk, every single I, I encounter dogs off leashes every single time. But most people are really good about it. They'll stop right away, right. put their dog on a leash, we pass by each other, you know, and I don't know what they do after they pass through, but it's fine. <laughs> but that one group that had like six dogs. Yeah, and we haven't encountered that at all in animal control. And they did not, none of them went to get their dogs on a leash. And they, all the dogs came running at us. Me, my wife, and my kid, they circled us, then they ran back, and they were running into a stream. And Where was this? This was and the trail that goes from the community garden to the back of ice and tiny anyways there's a there's a, a turn there and there's a stream you know go out here you just let the dogs go you know play which is fine except that i happen to come by you know <laughs> and then i i yelled at them all and they immediately put the dog on dishes you know and then I walked by, I couldn't get by them. They didn't do that. They continue on. Well, so they know. The fact that they got them on right away, no argument, is they all know what the rule yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say, you know, parks and rec, or, yeah. you know, I didn't yeah. do all yeah. that stuff. I just said, put your <laughs> dogs on leashes. You know, yeah. my dog's on a leash. And they did, you know. Well, when we kept on walking and talking, we're saying, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, signage, the rule, none of it. It's not going to change anything. We're not even issuing infractions yet. Sometimes it wants us to wait until spring. You guys aren't going to be there on a Sunday morning. It was like, it was early. It was, uh, we do do time. patrols. Yeah, she works 8 to 2 on Sundays. Yeah. So she's at Bicentennial every Sunday, just not hitting the right time because they've only had, they've each had one nasty conversation at Bicentennial and that's it. These so guys started doing parts. They must have been parked um, at the top of Bison Town. Yeah. Because um, I passed them once. I went around them and I saw them. And then I was coming back and I still passed them. So they must have had to go back. So I bet you they go into Bison Town and let the dogs right off. And then we're off the whole time. So, whatever. Anyways, the point is, it's not getting any better. Unless you want to. Deputize me. Is that a yeah, donation? I think it is. We have to go to council. If you're looking for money, we have to get to right. in or just get your, 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 your social security number, TIN. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't want to give me a jacket, give me a book. I'll write my own ticket. So would have given me six tickets right there and there on the spot. <laughs> He's got a volunteer. Yeah, he also, so the police have their volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions, Steve? Okay. Uh, we talked about going to little people's. Uh, you know, we'll see if we can get something in the spring. I mean, is there any? Other location or at this point, long wait, a couple months. Yeah, I, you know, probably April time frame that you know people will be out then. Uh, okay, rent update the fields. Um, <laughs> so Miss Gaglio is going to be at a meeting this week. We are going out to bid in a week or two. And bids will be due back in March. We're looking to go to the first 
April town council meeting, um, whatever that Tuesday is, to hopefully hire the contractor once the bids come in. So, and then we'll start to go into contract with them and start to mobilize for June. It should be on schedule and everything, pending any supply and demand issues. The flight director feels so confident and so happy about this that he's actually planning um, home games for the soccer team in the fall. That's interesting because yeah. we told him substantial completion would not be until November. Yeah, so that's not, very yeah. interesting. He, he actually said that at this meeting to the event. Interesting. He said he's looking to plan one one game for each team. This fall. fall. Interesting. Maybe maybe our question was when are the bleachers? We told him in? substantial completion yeah, in November, no, right? I'm not rethinking yeah, something. We brought that up. Yeah. Not necessarily for this fall, right? obviously. Yep. Yeah. Ready. But we need bleachers. You're not going to have bleachers. Bleachers are not part of the project. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. They like the soccer parents the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> not on the track, but yeah, the outside of the fence there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the only place we can really put Those are the new signs that DOE has. Oh. Okay, I'll take the scoreboard. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've been through Sage. Uh, last Friday they came, uh, two Fridays ago they came. They dug down nine and a half feet, 25 feet wide. They set the posts. Um, those are ready to go. The scoreboard has been delayed a few weeks uh, due to the fact that we had them add the safety netting. The safety netting was not added when they were going to deliver it in okay. February. So they pushed it off the middle of March. We were out all week long and we ran all new conduit from the existing scoreboard to the new scoreboard. So that seems to be going pretty good. Um, we're hoping and praying that the electricians, electronics, and everything works smoothly and everything will be up and running sometime prior to April 1st. Um, there is a slight, slight snafu where both scoreboards won't be, but might be up and operation, operational at the same time, um, but we don't really know where that stands. So we're gonna, probably gonna have electronics come back at a later date and take down the old scoreboard after we know the new scoreboard is actually running. Yeah. Um, it just, it didn't work as smooth and seamless as, as we thought. Uh, we were not aware of exactly how much power the Jumbotron would need. And we're kind of right at the brink. So we're working with Eversource right now of increasing the size of the transformer and how much power is in the electrical panel below the press box. So it's a little hiccup, but it seems to be going smooth. Okay, thank you. There's no security camera on this world, right? Yeah. Nope. No, no cameras in that facility. Where, where do we stand with that? Right. What do, <laughs> so we did have a discussion about a couple of months ago about security cameras. If you guys were going to once again go back to the um, police because to get it ready for this, we, I, for this spring. I, 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 95% positive where I believe we left off, left off is all of the camera requests and everything are now going through IT and Brian Freeman. And once they get the Wi Fi and everything running up at Sage Park, they were going to start to try to build a platform off of that to get us remote access to other fields. So it would all be connected and monitored through the borough police department the same way all the security cameras that are currently installed throughout the town are. I believe that's right. Right, yeah, that's oh, okay, so that's that's there's, actually, there's more technical issues that I just don't know. Right. So the fiber is the fiber is pretty much ready to go. The rack was hung. The, they were out there trying to get all the fiber optics and everything ready to go. They've got some boosters. They're going to be able to booster the signal from the home side across the field to the visitor side. So all of Scalise will have Wi-Fi connectivity, and that is all in slate for some time. Let's we'll say prior to July. And we've got the CAD5 cable to go from, or the Ethernet cable that'll go from where the ice machine is in the youth room directly out to the scoreboard. So that is good to go. So we have an empty line if that's all that's there. You cleaned up the uh, building. We got rid of a lot of junk that's been in there for years. Oops. We have this great scoreboard if you want to still have a home game. <laughs> <laughs> That was yeah. Okay. Um, 
We do have another item to discuss. So Jim Mahoney was at our meeting last week. Jim would have passed out some documents. Can I have a motion to add to our agenda this is the last item that we discussed tonight? Um, the plan of conservation, discussion of plan of uh, conservation and development. I'll make a motion to add discussion of POCD. Towns cut capital improvement plan. POCD. Nobody votes. What it? POCD. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Okay. So Jen received this email that you have a copy of from Jim Mahoney, where he took our comments from last week and he amended the um, plan, which is this packet here. And then he summarized changes that included some of our comments in this one page, two page summary part of that. <clears throat> this first document identifies, he actually went in and identified a priority for items, who the lead is and who the partner is. When you see P and R, that's Park and Rec Commission. There's a, so I, as I looked at it, I said, okay. Um, so Jen has copied for us where he has put P and R and the first item is on that first page three where continue to attempt to manage invasive species problems in town-owned water bodies. Now, Conservation Committee is, Commission is also noted. Um, public grounds to use is the lead. I guess we're in there because of SAGE. Uh, no, you, you're bodies? in there because of veterans and papers. It, it could, what? Not paper birds. That doesn't fall under commission. It's not a Then it's veterans park. Okay. So we don't we don't treat any invasive species at Sage Park. It's only uh, veterans, the railroad pond, and neighborhoods. Who will excuse railroad pond? So, so why are we in there, right? Veterans. Oh, because it's Veterans Park. Yeah. Okay. So and even though we kind of steer everything to Charlie when there's a request, but grounds maintains it, and it's technically a park. So okay, so that's why we're there for that one. Um, and if you turn the page 12, this that's is the park and rec section of the book. This is what we went over the lot last time. Right, yes. that's what we talked about. Um, I took the, I'm not passing out because we got, you know, this is a 10 year plan. That Just so you know, that development park and recreation master plan is huge. And I don't know if you guys have seen other parks, other towns parks master plans, you go online, it's pretty interesting. Some towns have done a superb job, really summarizing. I say towns, commission staff done a superb job summarizing their vision for Parks and Rec. You know what they they, they have a page for every uh, park, every pool, every this that, with you know bullets on on uh, what they've done to it, what the expectations are for the future, how this all, you know this encompassed into that vision of how the town supplies parks and recreation support to the to the community. Pretty it's they're that thick and their beautiful color. I mean they're just I, I was like amazed. And that's a major project. And my only point with this obviously yeah park and rec commission but I, I do think somehow we need to have staff involvement obviously you know not public grounds necessarily in this bullet, but what I see missing here is the, is the staff involved. Because, you know, we're, we sit here, we're volunteers, and all that. <coughs> yes, we should be involved in it, we should help, but you guys are the professionals. You know, so somehow that's, that's my, one of my comments that I would like to be said is somehow they have to put the department. So what's cons considered a partner? A park is partner. a partner, partner. And his, uh, because support. because support. that bullet incorporates it's it actually should be switched because you're talking about trails and paths. It's more conservation when you're getting into the trails. 
but it's because it's connecting the parks and the playground, it's kind of both of our commissions. So I was thinking, Donna, maybe that's where. Right, you put yeah. the department, right. right, as a partner. As a partner. Yeah. I mean, it, we would. I think just, we're, we're considered a partner, just like who leads conservation. Is that, um, who's the staff liaison for that? Uh, Maureen. 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 Yeah, so like Maureen is a partner with that con conservation commission. We're a partner with your commission. I mean, I think it's all. All of these commissions don't work if they don't have staff liaisons to, you know, so, facilitate so, them. So you're included in part of the rec? I, 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 that's how I view it. I view it as if it's the commission that I'm the staff liaison for, then I'm involved in it. That's fine. I just want to make sure yeah. that your professional, you know, you and Debbie, I mean, part of the rec, right? That you're some you help supply us with information for these items, like that master plan. I, I, I'm sure the commissions by themselves haven't gone out and done it. And they got, they got input. They said, you know, th this is this is the vision that we'd want to see. That's the kind of stuff that I would expect the staff to lead us through, and that you know we would work with them. So, uh, as long as that's inferred in that, that's fine with me. Um, he, he did add things too, right? Yes. Based right. These strategies yeah. that are right. holding yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is good. Right, so you know he references the CIP. With, with, you wouldn't necessarily put the CIP plan right now right. that's in there. So right. he added that as a strategy. So those would be added. <coughs> to this. Okay. Um, and then he highlighted down below the actions, things like that. Oh, um, I had. I saw this before, you guys have it. And maybe you want to take a look at it. But the last bullet, I asked that, uh, that they look at adding the community senior center project. So the only comment I have on that, and probably because I worked on it, a little more sensitive, is the way he worded it, complete the process that's underway. It's not underway complete the process that was started in 2022 to plan for a new community senior center and hold a funding referendum for a project to address. We're not at that point yet. Um, so I would scratch hold a funding referendum, um, but certainly complete the process that was started in 2022 for a new community senior center to address the statements of need, one for Parks and Rec that was already submitted as well as uh, Commission on Aging for the project, whether as one project in a phase manner or in partnership with other organizations, which is fine because that's what the council's is decided. Mm -hmm. But I would eliminate hold a funding referendum because I don't know what's already been shot down anyway, right? By the department. No, it's right. by the town council. Oh, okay. You know, it's shot down and they've kind of put it to the mm -hmm. side. Finance committee says. We don't think we can afford it, but really the council should go through the statement of needs, maybe whittle it down, then come back and say, you know, and none of that's been asked for, none of that's been done. So they need to, it was started, now, you know, kind of complete. And that's what he's saying. But not, I, I don't think holding a funding referendum, I think that's premature. So we don't know what the referendum's going to be about, what their option will be. Anything else? Yeah. Are you guys okay yeah. with that? Yeah. General. Okay. Yeah, I think any changes you want to submit to Jim, just shoot him up in an email and I can send him over to him. Okay. I he went through you, so I thought you should send it back, but that's I didn't write down what you said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he wants info from the commissions. So I think you guys just agreed on it. Just literally edit that one sentence. I think you're fine. Because all these okay, you know I what? think are fine, right? We're not changing any of these. No. Those right. are all fine that right. we just went over. It's just that last bullet point about the community senior center, right? Yeah. Just a few words. The, yeah, the words. Yeah. Like, here is conduct playscape, athletic field, right. athletic court replacement. We're missing pools, pool complexes. And so we need kind of a catch all for what, you know, what's not included in that. So I, yeah, so like I, you know, I wrote down, why don't I do this? And I'm going to write up 
comments that I have, send them out to you guys because you kind of see this for the first time. I'll do it, you know, by sometime next week. Jen, Jen I'm going to send it out to them as a group. Okay. And although that, you know, you individually send me your comments. Okay. okay? And then we'll send something to the and we'll copy. Uh, and again, it's only for the ones that are P and R. So only for P and R. Right. Right. Um, okay. That's fine. And I, the one that he had for Steve's uh, staff resources to increase, you know, make sure we have enough public rounds. Yeah. I didn't see that in the whole document. I didn't see that one that I did see before. And I hope they didn't take it out. So I, I'm going to go through it again, make sure. I, I, I'll ask, I think he was going through that through the conservation. Yeah, yeah. I had the, Jen sent me the whole new thing and I went through it. I couldn't see it. So I got to just compare the two and then I'll find it. I'm sure it's there. I hope it's there because I think that was, you know, certainly. Yeah, I know, he, I know he had said he put that request through the conservation, not part of Right. right, but it's really to increase, you know, make sure that there's enough staff because you're spread across various right. 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 Okay, I, I have a quick question. All right, does that work? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I have a question, Steve. Yeah. Hey, Steve, didn't you say at one time that you have like a master plan? Yes. So that includes the, the parks and the playgrounds and all that stuff. I'm just asking. I don't know. No, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. we have a ten-year maintenance plan for the fields that you and I did a couple years ago. Yeah, I don't think I have one. I don't know if we have playgrounds. Right. So I think the playgrounds. To that point, if you look at the town's yeah, the master plans that they've all prepared, there is a list of all parks. You know, whatever under the Parks and Rec Commission store. There's a list of all the facilities. I would like to see such a list created for instance sicko park brought it up in your last yeah. i'm like that's what we're not park? i never even think about that being on the parks mm -hmm. Road commission i don't know if you guys do i, I read the it. charter today and we're still not sure if it's under us but but see that's mm -hmm. the difficulty it's, it's with something parks. Else. Just they, clean, change, you know, they, they say that all under the commission it's like it's kitty corner and park it's a bench it's part of the street it's part of the tony so anything right. that we do that those so, people don't know, we put in there. Yeah, but not everything Steve maintains falls under parks and rec. No, that's right. So but you know like, what? I think we need, to your point, we need a master list. Pool complexes, athletic fields, parks, we have that. whatever we have else. That. We, we, we have that. that. Yeah, we have yeah. that. We have that. that. That's on the website. Yeah. yeah. Right. It has Sicko Park on it? Yeah. yeah. I believe it's in there. Yeah. I would, yeah. Where do I find it? Where do I find it? I, it's, uh, what, what's that called? That, um, oh, we, uh, yeah. Uh, amenities? I, amenities? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's, there, it's about an 18 page document. Yeah, Under think. for just Parks and Rec. Like it includes Sicko Park. We need to that doesn't can necessarily you, fall can under. You, Jen, can you just PDF us we, all a copy? We don't need to update some of the things on there. I would like yeah, to Some of it is outdated. Just, yeah. And so that we're all knowledgeable. I would I never yeah. think a single oh, part must be an underwear. I don't know what it was. <laughs> right. That's used to be. I don't know that right. that is under us. It's it's one of those that's I based on our charge like I'm not Crystal sure. Creek, you know, oh maybe Parks and Rec doesn't have it. Yeah, well, we do have it, but yeah, okay. Maybe, you know, who knows? For now. So, but Steve's got it. But <laughs> those are under for now. So there's discussion. I have it. Okay, so we'll get that list. And from that, though, maybe, you know, we can expand on that using that list to understand, you know, what's needed in the future. Because somehow it has to tie back to your CIP stuff eventually, you know, your 10 year plan. It will I think help single when park you do is this the the soil that was given there because it used to be a garage and it was not able to be used for anything else when, when it's in a floodplain and a wetland, that it was to be nothing more than a park. And that's right. how. It was donated to us, and I think the volunteer park falls in the same way as ever source for bringing our future utilities used it for a substation for 20 something years. When players fish, fire rate, that was so. I think that's how and I, that's how all of these pieces of property I inherit. I, I inherit for 10 million <laughs> soil, <laughs> aren't you special? Yeah. Right, is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
right. Okay, that's helpful. We're Anything good? else? No, I'm good. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good meeting. Thank you, Thank you guys.